I am going to put the attendance form again. Um, remember, you only have to fill that out one time per day. So if you did it already during the opening session, you don't have to do it again. Um, but make sure you um, do that one today so that they will have your address to send you the book. Um, and then also just to have this network of people. So um, hopefully that will be helpful. All right, so good. We got a few more people joining us. Um, now, just FYI, um, I have several sessions called Tech Tips along the way. Um, if it says Tech Tips, it's going to be a repeat of this same session, um, except for like first thing tomorrow, it's a, just a really short one. And so I will briefly go through some of these slides, but then it'll be more of a Q&A. Um, the tech support session is definitely super informal question and answer kind of thing. Um, typically when we do this face to face, I have some sessions, but then I camp out and people just come to me one by one because technology, it's so specific to your computer, your video situation, whatever. Um, so keep in mind a lot of the things I'm going to show you are going to be just broad scale this is how it is in general. Um, and I promise we will have some time for some questions at the end. But if it's something super specific and you don't want to get into it here, um, I have my contact information on there um, and you can reach out to me and I will try to help you any way I can. Uh, because I can't even fathom um, doing national boards during this time. So we are all the brave souls uh, doing this process to begin with, but doing it in the midst of all the uncertainty. Um, so anyway, if you need my help, feel free to reach out. All right, so I am going to um, go ahead and put my um, URL in the chat for my presentation. And you can um, copy paste or click on that and go ahead and open that presentation. And even if you'd rather just watch when I'm presenting, I want you to click on this so that you'll have um, that presentation available to you. And um, I will show you in a second, but if you have a Google account, whether it's through your school or a personal one, you can go to file and make a copy and it will make your own copy in your Google Drive so you'll have it. So if something crazy happens and I change it or usually I just make additional copies and then adapt. Um, so I don't usually get rid of my presentations, but I always just tell people do make a copy. So you have it in your drive, you have all these resources and everything. Um, and so I just want to make sure that, um, that you take that step. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Now, this is the fun thing because I have done several of these sessions this summer. I always feel like um, I look like I've never done this before when you start sharing your screen because you're manipulating like people's pictures and your tools and everything else. So it gets kind of crazy. Um, and of course, when I go full screen, it messes up what you were just looking at. So you may have to um, make some adjustments there as well. All right. Um, I have Kelly Lomax here with me. She is kind of facilitating everything. And um, I just started talking. Kelly, there's probably some things we're supposed to cover or supposed to say. I know Melissa want to make sure we did that. So um, if you want to unmute and say a few things before we get started, um, then we'll get rolling. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, as Brandy said, I am the um, panelist which is just um, fancy for I'm admitting people and um, trying to, to uh, watch the chat room and uh, really honestly learn from Brandy because 
I've already learned from her. So um, I appreciate all her wealth of knowledge. Um, we ask that um, you make sure that you're muted. Um, I, I'm watching that and I think everybody pretty well knows the um, Zoom etiquette by this time. But we do want you to be engaged with the presentation. Um, use the chat box for questions and then I will, um, if I need to interrupt Brandy or whatever for a question, a burning question that you have, we are recording it um, and it will be accessible to you um, in the sheet that brand that um, Melissa, Dr. Shields said. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, Tish. Um, that Dr. Shields was going to make available to everyone um, so that you'll have access actually to all of the presentations. So that's fantastic um, because there were lots of really great presentations happening today and tomorrow. Um, if you, um, let's see, make sure you sign, um, you complete the attendance form that we are posting repeatedly in the chat box, um, especially um, the, book, the books that, um, that they're be they're giving away that's how they're getting them to you through your um the address on the attendance form so please make sure you complete that just once each day um it was made available to you in the general session and then um it will be in each session but you only have to do it once each day um and that is all that i have so brandy take it away i'm gonna mute myself <laughs> all right um, and, and like I said earlier, it's a small group, so we can be super informal. Um, you will not offend me if you do need to unmute your mic and say, hey, can you slow down or stop or whatever, feel free to do that. Um, I did want to mention, uh, Melissa said in the opening session, she's like the NBCT granny. Well, I think I was like right on her heels um, because I did this process in 2002 when there was still a box to pack and it was all paper. And so when um, three years ago, Melissa talked to me about this boot camp concept, she said, we're gonna need your help with the technology. Well, honestly, I had to sit down with, with her and Amber Trantham and some of these others that have been working with candidates because I hadn't worked with candidates in quite a while um, because my focus has been on technology integration and working with Alabama Technology in Motion. And so, um, you know, I sat down with, with her and she said, everything's electronic. So I went and studied and did all the tutorials, everything, but I did not have an actual account to log into. So the first boot camp, I sat down with a candidate and I said, all right, you're my guinea pig. Let's go figure this out together. And um, so what I'm doing with you guys is kind of what I started three years ago, which was learning this, hearing people's stories, hearing their frustrations, what technology would help the most. And so what I did was try to pack as much information in as possible over the three years of just listening to people's um, obstacles and things that they um, dealt with. I mentioned earlier that I was a high school English teacher for 13 years. Um, so my uh, certification is A-Y-A-E-L-A. -A -E and um, the second time around in renewal, I did have to borrow a classroom because at that point, I was technology integration specialist for a school district. And so I borrowed a classroom, did the renewal process. And, um, and so I've been through that and very soon I'll be renewing again because I do think it is, is super important. Um, so this is my email address, Twitter handle, everything. Feel free to reach out to me and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, but this is year five for me with Alabama Technology in Motion. And um, I jokingly said that when everybody shut down the school buildings and went to remote learning, our job became even more significant. And because everybody's hair was on fire, they all of a sudden decided, oh my gosh, all that technology stuff they've talked about is really important and I better learn it today. And so um, my phone started ringing off the hook. I started getting emails and just started making videos and screencasts and anything I could do to help teachers because I knew that teachers that want to be great teachers were willing to do anything they could to reach all the students, no matter where they were. And so um, things that I took for granted, I thought oh, everybody knows this, people didn't know it. And so, um, so anyway, that's been kind of what I've done all summer is a lot of technology 
to help teachers. So if you have other questions not related to NBCT, shoot those to me too, because I promise if you're asking it, there have been 10 other teachers that have thought it and asked that same question to get ready for students this year. Um, so Zooming, many of you probably are used to this format. Um, just remember, you can unmute, you can start or stop your video, um, you can use the reactions if you have them. Um, I find that some people may not have the full version of Zoom, so you may not see those little reactions there. Um, I know that if you have uh, been on this journey for any length of time, you have probably already discovered this guide to electronic submission. That is huge. Everything I'm telling you is what I learned from that document. Um, if you have a question I can't answer, and I guarantee you somebody is going to have a question I can't answer, my answer is going to be go to the guide or go to your specific um, instructions. And I know you're tired of hearing that, but that is just really the key is go to your specific instructions and, and hunt down what you're looking for. Um, and I'm going to, I hope I don't make you like crazy dizzy as I kind of go in and out of the slideshow. But um, this guide has changed. Actually notice it says 2020. So I had been using the same one the last two years. So they have updated it. Um, and then another thing that I will mention, if you don't know this trick, let's see, hold on. Um, in your Chrome browser, if you don't know this trick, if you pull up a PDF or a website like this, you can do Command F if you're on a Mac or Control F if you're on a PC and it will pull up this little search box. It's only in the Chrome browser. But if you do Control F for find or Command F, you can search for a word. And like evidence, it says there's 26 instances of this word. And look, I can take this little arrow and it shows me where that word is in the document. If you didn't know this trick, how helpful would this have been when you were in college <laughs> doing research? Um, so anyway, this is a great trick for Chrome browser. If you are looking through your instructions and you're looking for something very specific, like video, you could search the word video and see how many times it shows up in the document. So, um, so anybody else, have, has anyone used that trick? Give me a thumbs up if you've ever used that trick before. Um, and I just think that that is one of those really cool tricks that I did not know really until just um, a year ago. And I started using it and I'm like, where has this been all my life? Um, so that control after that command F if you're on a Mac allows you to search for a specific word. So that can be helpful in your instructions on a website, whatever. So use that. Um, guide to electronic submissions and then national boards also has several pages with tons of resources so um, if there's something that i don't answer for you this e-portfolio resources page has a ton there and, and i've got several links to this one throughout um, but that is one place i would recommend that you go Another place which when I was trying to figure out a lot about this platform is their tutorials page. These are really, really well done videos. Talks about the registration process, uploading and submitting. Those are the three major obstacles that people experience when they're dealing with the technology of this process. Um, and so when you click that, it is a very, I mean, it's not engaging video, but it is a very specific video. Um, you can pause it. it. It shows you all the steps. So these tutorials are really invaluable. Um, so I would definitely check those out too as you're going through this process.
So as we're talking about evidence, um, one of the biggest features that threw people when um, this portal kind of kicked off was this labeling feature. So when you're in the portal and you're ready to add your pieces of the puzzle, um, there is a labeling feature. It says new beginning 2018. That's the screenshot that I took then. It's exact same. Um, but there are different labels. There's a drop down with these labels for each piece of the puzzle. So just be aware of that, that when you go to upload it, it's going to want to label everything for you. Back in the day of paper in the box, there were actual labels. And so here, this is labeling everything for, for two reasons. One, so that you can kind of check off and know that you have all the pieces that they are looking for. But two, also for scoring, where these things are sent, you know, they, they have a specific um, label. So don't let this throw you. Um, know that the labeling part should be helpful to you, but, but this is very significant. I have people ask all the time, what if I put something in the wrong place? Well, you can go and delete it and put it again right up until the point where you submit. So don't be fearful of this process. Um, so once you have successfully labeled something and uploaded it there, you will be able to review your file. You can change the label if you put the wrong label on it. You can remove the file and you can upload and label another file. So this I think is another really significant piece. And I, I know I probably sound like I'm oversimplifying this, but um, this whole process of putting everything into the system uh, can, can make you scared. I mean, when I put it in the box, there was a lot of um, security in the fact that I physically put it there. When I send something into the internet abyss, I am scared to death because I don't know, did it go? Is it there? You know, so there is something to be said about practicing this process. So the one tip that I gave early on in this is it is okay if you want to do a trial run you can take a blank document or a document with no, no information on it or a form and you can upload it and practice all these steps and then easily remove that file and put the real thing. Um, also, if you're wanting to test how long it's going to take you, you can do that with what I call dummy files. So feel free to review and change and review some more. You're probably going to do that anyway. Even when you upload all the real stuff, you're probably going to check and double check it a lot before you hit submit. So do some practice uploading. Um, know that it's got to be labeled a certain way. Um, that labeling part is important because as you're putting everything together, and I'm going to talk about um, PDFs and document formats, as you're putting everything together, what you don't want to do is take it and make one big 20 page document. And then realize when you get into the system that it needs to be separated into these five sections. So don't let that stress you out. But if you take some time and look at those labels and how everything's supposed to be packaged, it's going to make it a lot easier for you as you are putting evidence together and saving things on your computer. Um, so label your folders and your documents according to this labeling feature. Now, I love to talk to people about organizing their digital world, but I'm a horrible example. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you could see my desktop or you could see my folder situation in Google Drive, it's not good. But when it came to national boards, I was as organized as I had ever been in my life. So I would say to you, as you're creating folders in your Google Drive or on your computer or wherever you're doing it, go ahead and utilize these labels and know what needs to go in each of those labels. So when you're packaging and when you're putting things together, you've already got it 
the way that national boards wants it uploaded. And hopefully that makes sense. All right, so I do wanna talk um, briefly about pictures. Um, when you're creating your evidence, for some of you, you'll use um, a picture that you've taken, a screenshot of something. You'll use a document that you will need to put into um, a PDF. So there's a lot of different formats. Now, I have a screenshot here of um, Microsoft Word. So the first question is, what are you going to use when you're creating your documents? Um, I love the Google tools. I always tell people though, I would probably use Google for 95% of what I'm doing in my national boards process. The last 5% would be pulling it into a program like Microsoft Word that allows me to be very specific and granular in my formatting. Um, because when you are limited on your space and it's got very specific rules, I find that a program like Microsoft Word allows me to do that formatting exactly the way I want it. Um, you may find that when you take something from Google Docs and you download it into a program like Word, it changes it ever so slightly. It's not a lot, but it's a little. It's enough that if you are really needing to maximize your space, that it is worth making sure you go into a program like Word and make sure everything is just the way you want it and looks the way you want it. Um, so in Word, there are certain layout tools and the link that I have here is kind of a how-to on putting images into Microsoft Word. So if you're a uh, Microsoft Word user and you're putting your pictures in, the one thing I would encourage you to look at is the wrap text feature. And that's going to allow you to manipulate that picture the most. So if you choose the wrap text feature within what they call this ribbon of Word, and you choose this tight option, that's gonna give you the most, the maximum usage of your picture. It allows you to write captions and use text all around the picture. So for those of you that are creating a piece of evidence and you need a picture and you need some captions and information around it, this is gonna maximize your space by positioning that picture in a certain way and wrapping the text using that tight option um, those are really helpful. And so this link, this layout tools link shows you that. And then I've just got a couple of arrows here kind of showing you in this ribbon, when you go to format, it's going to get you to this wrap text section. The other option is if you are using Google Photos. Now here's my Google photos, um, personal stuff, it's got all my crazy pictures. Um, I would encourage you if you don't um, already use Google Photos, uh, this is an app you can get on your phone. If you have a school Google account or a personal Google account, whatever you want to connect it with, what's handy about that is if you put the app on your phone and you're taking pictures, you can set up your phone to back up your camera roll to Google Photos. If you have an Android phone, you already have Google Photos. It essentially backs them up there. The handy thing about that is I take those pictures here and I just open up photos.google.com and have access to my photos on my computer. It's not, I got to send them to my computer, airdrop, email them to myself. Um, by utilizing Google Photos, it allows me to just seamlessly have those pictures and videos accessed on my computer. So that is a trick that I like. And also, if you're the person who tends to have 8,000 pictures on your phone and you run out of storage, Google Photos allows you to back up unlimited amounts of pictures 
and then you can clear that space off on your tablet or on your phone. So I would recommend that. Um, and then another thing, if you are looking for a tool to edit pictures, if you're looking for a tool that will allow you to um, essentially crop out a student's face, um, Canva is what I recommend, C-A-N-V-A. It is free, even though there is a paid version of it. And it's very simple. You just choose to create a design, whatever that design size is that you want. And you can upload any picture that you want. So for example, this is, um, you know, all the different crazy stuff I've uploaded here. And if I had a picture like this and I needed to um, hide a student's face, there are all of these free. Now there are some that are paid and they'll be indicated with like a dollar sign on them, but there's a ton of free ones. And so I could just look up smile and see if I hover over some of them and they say pro, that's one that I can't use, but there are some that are free. And so I can simply take this little smile sticker and pull it over his face. There are plenty other um, services that do this. Canva is just the one that I think is the easiest. What I like about this too is I can add text, I can add all kinds of things, and then I have some download options up here, including a PDF. So if I wanted to make my entire piece of evidence in Canva and upload pictures, images, screenshots, whatever I needed to do, I could do the whole thing here and download it as a PDF and it's good to go into my evidence. I can also download it as a picture and put it into a Word document or whatever I wanted. So um, I just think as far as a free program, and like I said, there are paid versions of this, um, but the free stuff that's with Canva is, is super helpful. So if you're using a program like this, um, just ask yourself, is it worth using Canva because of the download options and some of the stickers and things that are included? There's shapes and different things that you can use, I think, that are super handy. All right, so I'm gonna take just a quick minute and open up for some questions or comments. Any um, comments or ideas on things that you have used for um, creating evidence, adding pictures? Some of you may be beginning the journey. So um, you can either mute your mic or you can put it in the chat and let me know if there's any programs that you have used that you think would be helpful. Uh, so Karen asked, does Canva allow you to format specifically? I don't know what else. You can unmute your mic and ask. You know, like you were saying in the Word document that it has to be particular, specific, this, whatnot. Does all that have to be like already created in Word and then you like import it to there and save it in one spot? Or can you manipulate it once it's in Canva? Um, if I'm working in Canva, everything is free form. I can move and shake and pull and, and that's, I think, what I like about it the most. Mm -hmm. um, now, a lot of times I will save that whole thing as a JPEG, as a picture. Then I will import that whole picture into um, Docs or Word because then I guarantee my margins are exactly like, you know, because I think that's the frustrating thing about um, national boards is that I thought if I don't have the margins just so they're going to toss my whole entry. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I won't say that that's the case, but I will say that there's a reason why their instructions are as specific as they are. Mm -hmm. And um, now they are scoring things 
and receiving things back and forth electronically. So there's a reason why the margins and everything are specific. So if you're comfortable with Word and that's what you're using, then maybe with Canva or whatever you're using, you download that whole piece as a picture, import it into Word and make sure the formatting is exactly like you like it. But you can, like I said, download that whole thing as a PDF. So if margins are not an issue when it comes to a picture or something like that, um, mm -hmm. then you can download it as a PDF and then include it in what you're doing. Hopefully that answers that. Um, yeah, and several of you that are at the beginning of this journey or like comp four is what I think about when I think about, you know, creating these pieces of evidence. Um, hopefully those are things that will be helpful. So I'm going to move on. And um, thank you guys for sharing those um, ideas. All right, so I mentioned already putting your images into documents. If you are using Google Docs, just like I talked about in Word, when you go to insert an image, don't forget when you select that image, you have those same alignment and wrapping options within Google Docs. So once you've selected that picture and you see these little squares around it, um, you can use that middle one, which is that, that tight or that wrap function. Um, I think a lot of people think they're very limited in Google Docs and they don't have that option, but you do. So remember that um, you can wrap the text around and you can freeform move that picture in Docs just by selecting it and choosing um, one of these options. All right, so um, scanning and importing your evidence. Uh, I have a lot of teachers that still love the big old multifunction copier at their school and that's where they take everything and scan the whole thing into one big package. And that's fine if that's what you love. But there are so many really amazing apps that are out there that allow you to use your phone or your tablet as your scanner. And so um, especially now when many of us are gonna, who knows when we'll be in our building or um, if we'll even want to be in the copy room for things. Um, so you have several app options. Um, these are just a few that I have used. Um, I'm a big fan of the Evernote products. Um, Evernote is a note-taking app. And so once you have an account with Evernote, when you download these other apps, they're very seamless. So I like Scannable because when I use that app and I scan something, it scans it to a PDF automatically and it will send it to my Evernote account that I can access on my computer. I can also organize things in Evernote in a way that I can't if it's just scan and send to email, which I do that too. A lot of times if I go somewhere and an administrator says, will you send me a copy of the sign-in sheet? I will use my scannable app and I have the option to send so I can immediately email it to that administrator or I have the option to save and I'll save myself a copy of it in my Evernote account. Um, Cam Scanner is another really handy one. Office Lens, um, if you're a Microsoft Office person. Adobe Scan um, is also a good one. And so all of these are just options instead of taking a physical picture of the item, particularly if it is a document, you want to be able to scan it to a PDF. It's going to give you um, a much better quality um, as far as that document is concerned. Uh, and you don't have to worry as much about lighting. I will say that with a lot of these um, scanner options, you do need to put a contrasting background. So um, put it on a dark table or a piece of fabric or a piece of poster board that's dark so that you get a good quality scan. Screenshots. So I'm a big fan of taking a screenshot of something. There are screenshot capabilities on your computer. A lot of times the Mac has a special keystroke function. If you have a Chromebook, Chromebook has a keystroke function. Um, <clears throat> but I also love screenshot programs. Um, one that I use is a Mac product called Skitch. 
Um, Jing is one, and I had heard rumor that Jing was going away. TechSmith created it, and I just went to click there. Um, anyway, it's a download. Both of those programs are downloads. Um, but what it allows you to do, I'm just going to give you an example. So if I use this screenshot program, I can grab just a section. And with the one that I have, which is Sketch, and that's for Mac, Jing will work for a PC. What I love about it is these annotation abilities. Okay, so I can draw an arrow to something to draw attention to it. I can click over here and use text, and I can say, um, look at this. Okay, so ability to do that, it's got the circle. Um, so, so there are a lot of programs that do this, but I like um, that Skitch and Jing have those annotation opportunities right there in the tool. Another one that might be handy is this little pixelation thing. Check that out. We just talked about having to blur out or put a sticker over a kid's face. So if you needed to redact something, you could essentially use that. Or then you've got, you know, the marker. You've got a lot of different options here. Um, and so, I don't know. This is just something that I use a lot. And so I recommend it to people. Randy. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the question is, uh, if this is this um, just a Mac um, product or is it for PCs, the Skitch and Jing? Um, Skitch is specifically for Mac. Jing is for either. Okay. But they are downloads. There are some screenshot um, uh, things that are not downloads. So, for example, I love Chrome extensions. I have a lot of them up here in my browser. If you're not familiar with Chrome extensions, there are these little handy dandy buttons that are up in the top of your browser. And I'm like moving everything around. So all these little handy buttons allow me to do a lot of really neat things in my browser. And um, I have so many that I have them hidden away in, an, in something called Extensity. So it actually packages all my extensions here and I can make them visible or not visible. Um, and so there are tons of little screen capture ones available too. And I wanted to see if I could pull one up really quick. All right, so here's one called Nimbus Screenshot. And um, that's an, another one that is free. And I'm trying to think, do I have that one available to me now? Because I did just turn it on. Um, but that one does some of the same stuff. It's called Nimbus Screenshot and Screen Video. Um, and sometimes, I'm just going to give a little refresh. Um, if I refresh my page, I can access it, and it's just not showing up for me right now. And I'm not sure why. Oh, there it went. Hold on. Well, it is not showing up, but um, that's another one that you just click up here in the top and it allows you to do some of those same screenshot features. Um, so play around with it, see which one works for you. Um, but I am a big fan of the download because it gives me a lot of the um, extra features that I like. Um, I did want to mention Google Drive. So if you um, have Google Drive on your Android phone and you open up the app, you have a scan feature right there in the Google Drive app. By using the camera feature in the app, when you go to upload something to Drive, you can scan it in straight from your phone. So that's another, I mean, that, that almost alleviates some of the scanning steps. And if you're a Google Drive user, that's really handy. Um, so that's only in the app. So, um, so definitely check that out. All right, so this is probably one of the biggest steps that I see people struggle with is the fact that they want to put everything in a, into a PDF. 
and they want to be able to package things the way they're supposed to be based on those labels. So I can make this whole big Word document, but once I have that Word document created, how do I separate everything other than copy, paste, make new documents? Um, it can get kind of hairy. Um, so there's a couple of things. And before I go over the Mac option, um, let me know if anybody has a Mac. So give me a thumbs up or put yes in the chat if you are working with a Mac. If you're not, then I'm not gonna talk about the Mac option. Um, but it's, it's a little different than um, some of the other options. So I will show the Mac option and then I will show you the option for no matter what you're using. So um, this is a link to the step-by-step -step on how to do this. And this is combining PDFs on your Mac using the preview tool. So first of all, I am going to just grab something that is a PDF. See, I've got a lot of things pulled up here. There we go. So here is a So here's a PDF. My husband is in graduate school, so I have a lot of his uh, graduate school stuff on here. And it's multiple pages. Now, this Mac opened it in preview. Now, there's several different options. If I have Adobe, it may open it in Adobe. Um, but what I can do is when I go to open, I can choose what I want to open it with. And I have preview set as my default. So if you're on a Mac, um, you can open it in preview. And over here on the side, you can choose to look at the thumbnails. And if I need to reorder everything here, I can simply drag those pages. But the beauty of this program is that I can also open another PDF and I can combine those. Okay, so here is another PDF. And if I needed these two pages to be right smack in the middle of this one, then I'm going to select both of them and just simply drag them into this document. Now I have quickly merged those PDFs together and made them one document. In the same sense, if I needed to just have one single page, all I have to do is drag that thumbnail onto my desktop and I just pull that one page and separate it. So Preview has got that nice feature um, using thumbnails. And so if you're on a Mac, that's a simple way to do it. Um, there is a PDF joiner online. This, is, I think, might be recommended through national boards. Um, and then there is a download. I'm going to be honest with you, those are my least favorite options. Doesn't mean that they don't work. They're just not my personal favorites. And I will tell you this too, any downloads that they recommend, national boards has a disclaimer on it, but let me tell you that a lot of these downloads that are free are not really free they come packaged with some other stuff and a lot of times it seeps into your browser i'm not saying that they're viruses but i'm saying that they are um pieces of software that you don't want or need so sometimes if you're not careful with these free downloads you get more than you want um, so be very aware of that when you're downloading that you uncheck anything that it comes packaged with my favorite option is using a tool called Cami. Um, so somebody put in the chat, if you have used or heard of Cami, just give me a yes that you have used it or heard of it. Um, Cami is something that is free, but it has a paid version. And um, so we're just gonna click here and go to Cami. You do not have to have a Google account to use Cami. But if you want to connect it to your Google Drive, that is the handiest thing about Cami. 
So just opening it, this is just the free version. Notice I have an upgrade button over here in the top, but I'm just using the free version. I have some options here. I can open something from my computer. So if I have a document here on my computer, I can open it from there. I can open something from Google Drive. I can create a classroom assignment. This is if you have the upgrade. So those of you that are using Google Classroom, if it is worth it to you, because it is not cheap, but Kami is a super handy way for you to um, create PDF worksheets that your students can annotate using Kami. And so that's the first thing that drew me to Kami is the ability to go in and edit essentially a PDF. Okay, so the reason why I'm showing you, you this is there's, there's two reasons why I use Kami. One, to annotate a PDF. Two, is up here with their split and merge feature. So I'm going to start with opening from Google Drive. The handy thing about connecting it to a Google account is that everything I put in here will automatically be put into my Google Drive in a folder called Kami Uploads. So no worries about where did it go. If I edit it and I add things to it, I can come back to that editable PDF that I've been working on and make changes, which is super handy too, because some of these things you annotate, you work on the PDF, once you save it, it's gone. Here it lets me continue to edit. So I'm just gonna grab a document So here's an example. Look at this student release form. Okay. Now, I might want to go ahead and put in the school name, the teacher name um, for all my student release forms and send those out to my kids. Okay. So this is the free version. There are locks on any tools over here to the left that I don't have access to in the free version. But the thing I use the most is the text box. So once I click on text box, I can choose my font size and my font color. So I'm just going to choose 14. And now I type it in. Notice I've got some of these tool options up here and I can't change the font, but I can change the size if it's not the size I want. I can make it bold. You know, I do have some options here. And then when I click off of it, notice I can move it around wherever I want. So I love that feature, the ability to go ahead and put certain things in that PDF that are not going to be changed. Um, and then I can send this out to my students. Now imagine other things that you might want to edit. So let's say that this is um, a document that I need to remove student names or um, even a worksheet or something that I found that I really wish I could edit, but it's a PDF. Um, so some of the things that I have done before is in shapes. I've gone in and I've chosen white and I chose like the largest that they had. And I went in here and look, it's like white out. I know that probably seems like simple and no big deal to you, but there have been PDFs or something that I really wished I could just quickly manipulate and use as my own. Now, obviously with permission, but um, we've all had those things before that we wish we could just quickly manipulate and use it for our students. And then what I can do here is I can go in and I can add a text box. So I could say, dear um, students, and then I can just put that right on top. Um, and so that's just a handy tool. Okay, so once I'm done with all of this, and there's all these other tools you can fool around with, on the top right, I have some options. Um, and I have the print option. Notice I can print the original or with annotations. That's all the changes that I made. I have a save option. Notice that it shows me if I have any unsaved changes. It can save it now. It's all going to go into my Google Drive. And then I have download. And so I have some choices to my computer or to Google Drive with annotations. 
Um, I can name it whatever I want. Um, I can flatten annotations. Usually if I'm going to send this out to people, I will make that choice. That way it just kind of makes sure it packages everything. Um, and then I can choose what pages and then I can say export. And it exports the document and it's ready to go. So that is my first thing that I like about Cami is just that seamless annotation um, and it's automatically connected to my Google Drive. So the other thing that I love about Cami is the split and merge feature. And to me, it's so underutilized. It's kind of hidden up there at the top. Now this does require that you have everything in a Google Drive folder. So let's say that I had several pieces of evidence and I needed to package those things the way they need to be labeled. So I'm going to click on the little Google Drive icon. And I'm going to grab a bunch of these PDFs. Okay, so I'm just going to grab all of these um, and select. So here are the documents that I grabbed. This one is even a Word document. It's not a PDF. And I hit next. This is what I love about this. I can drag and drop pages, rearrange the heck out of them. I can get rid of something. I can turn it around. Have you ever had something in the middle of a PDF that was upside down or sideways? All of these cool features and notice it makes me a brand new little document holder. So it's like a bookshelf. So I have all these bookshelves and I can grab one page or multiple pages and I can rename those files so I can call this one section one and call this one section two. And if I'm real fancy, I can hit export all and it's like done. I just made three separate documents or I can export just one at a time. Um, and so this is super handy um, when you're talking about all of your files in one place, manipulating those pages. Um, and so there we go, just downloaded just this first section. And so that one is the split mode up here at the top. They have the merge mode. And so it allows me to add more files if I want to. And if I do this merge mode and I say export all, it just merged everything. So instead of dragging page by page, I have several documents I know I need to merge into one thing that's going to be labeled. I just grab all of them, hit merge mode, export, and it puts it all together. All right, so I told you that um, I tend to get a little excited. I don't work for Cami, and I don't even pay for Cami. But that's one of those tools that, for the most part, the people that I work with, um, National Board candidates, say that that is probably their most used feature is the ability to um, manipulate those PDFs. Randy, so, yeah, go ahead. A question um, over in the chat, and I also don't even know how to answer this, um, about flattening the pages. I know that there's, um, that, that does help with the size. Is that something that candidates need to do for every upload? Can you talk about that for just a sec? Um, when you're exporting that PDF, I have not seen a difference in when I check flatten annotations versus when I don't. Um, so I just typically check it anyway when I'm downloading it to print or to send to somebody. I think in my brain, and this is not official, but in my brain, it's like, okay, what if I send it and I have it flatten annotations and they happen to have Cami or something and it opens in Cami, then it might be manipulated, like something that they can move around. I don't, so flattening annotations for me guarantees that I package everything and it's not going to be something that can be manipulated or changed. But that's not official. That's just what I think. I cannot guarantee that. 
Um, but yeah, I usually choose that. Um, is there a way for students to sign documents online to student release? So, Cami does have in the, the upgrade the ability to add a signature. Um, that is not something that I've paid for. Um, there are several different options if a student has like a phone and you can send it to them and they can use like a drawing app. Um, but there's just not a really good thing that I have found for students to sign online. Now, me personally, I use an app called Notability and it is not cheap, but it's the one of my favorite apps to be able to sign things with my finger or a stylus. Um, but there are plenty of others. Anybody have a suggestion or an idea for something that is free that you can you have you <laughs> sign things? DocuHub. You know what? Somebody mentioned that one to me the other day. DocuHub. I have used that maybe once. Is that an app? Did I spell it right? DocuHub. Is that an app or is it online or both? Um, both, I think. I'm, I've only used it a couple of times, but it seems like I opened it online and then pulled the document into it and then signed it and then needed to get it back, like email it back. And the one thing that, that I didn't know, and this may be true for all um, things like that, is I had to actually go to my, it says you can email it from the app but then I actually had to go to my email and click on refresh or send or something because it didn't go, you know, it was still sitting in my drafts. So that was just like a little glitch. Um, but I, I really, I didn't pay for it. I know that much. And the person I was sending it to said that they had used it a lot. So that might be something to look into for maybe older students, not, not necessarily, you know, our younger ones, but um, yeah, free is good. <laughs> but that now, but now I'm like, I'm going to research that tonight because that is something I hadn't thought about that you may not see your students and may need them to do this online. Um, so hmm, that's a good point. I just was going to play really quickly with my um, Google Drive app. I don't think though that there is... Um, uh, there's not a drawing feature, not for me, on my tablet when it comes to that. So anyway, that's a great question. Um, something for me to research and find out. See, this is what I always learn more. All right. Um, we're going to jump back in. Ooh, and this is always fun because then, like, where'd it go? There we go. Um, so some of the document tips that they give for Mac and PC, I've linked them there. Um, we're talking about moving around your pages in a PDF, but a lot of times I have people using um, Word or Google Docs to create everything. So what I've typically done is suggested that you get it all in Word just like you like it, download it as a PDF, which you can do in Word or Google Docs. Then go into Kami and package things exactly how you need them. The nice thing about that is once you have downloaded something as a PDF, you know that you know that you know the formatting is locked in, okay? Um, the problem is if you don't do the PDF step and you, you wanna upload it as a doc because you can, that's one of the format options that you have. Um, in Google Docs, you cannot reorder pages. So that is frustrating, but I have tried every way and consulted plenty of Google boards. There is no way for you to reorder the pages other than just copy stuff, paste it into a new document or make a copy, that kind of thing. In Word, you do have an option. I've given you a link here to how to rearrange pages in Word it's a little bit of effort, I'm going to be honest, and it's about using headers. So if you have not actually formatted something in a document with the header style, then you would need to go in and add your headers 
and manipulate them in what's called the navigation pane. And so this takes you through that process. Um, I have Word on my Mac, but it does not have this feature. Um, so it would have to be Microsoft Word on a PC. But once you have put a header, for example, this one has the header page one, and it's not just a page number, but actually using the header heading one style. Over in the navigation pane, it essentially makes an outline. Once those headers are in place, you can drag and reorder your pages. Now, one suggestion was if you didn't want the headers, add them, sort everything, and then remove them. Like I said, it'll take you about that much time to do that piece as it would to download it as a PDF and manipulate it the other way. So it is whatever you're comfortable with, um, but I did want you to see that there is a way to do that. And then they even talk about the cut and paste, copy and paste options as well. Um, the, these are the kinds that I say uh, can like make you super frustrated or um, make you like learn more technology than you've ever wanted to learn. Um, but here's an example of one of their pages just talking about submitting your evidence as PDF for Microsoft users. So if you are using Microsoft Word and you need to save it as a PDF, they take you through the steps of how to do that. And then here is one of their options for combining PDFs that I said is not my favorite, um, but it is there and it is free. All right, now I told Kelly when we kind of went over all of this the other day that um, I do not have a slideshow long enough for two hours. I have a lot of links there for you to look at because it's gonna depend on what your needs are. And so you can go in there and go to that link and look at the very specific PD, uh, PDF stuff or stuff for a PC or for a Mac. Uh, but hopefully this has answered um, some of your questions. So kind of my thoughts were for the rest of this time, if you have a question that you thought of while I was going through that, or if you're like, I'm not going to attend any more of her sessions and I've got like a burning technology question, feel free to just jump in and ask and, um, and we'll just be super informal the rest of this time. Or your mind is blown right now. You're just like, I got a bunch of information. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Oh, my microphone works. Okay, awesome. Um, so I, Some people's <laughs> mics are terrible, but yours is awesome. Okay, good. I um, submitted component four this school year we just finished, and then I took the component one test. Um, I did do the boot camp last summer. Um, I did attend your tech tips last summer, and just I'll be 100% honest, it was just everything it was a lot and so I still have my notes and I remember some of these things that you mentioned then I just honestly did not use any of them but after doing component four oh my goodness I can see how much easier my life would have been <laughs> if I had used like Cami and Jean, oh my goodness, it would have made my life so much easier because I literally was like scissors and tape and old school and it was a nightmare. So, and I did use Word for stuff because I'm familiar with Word, but um, Word is a pain to manipulate things around on. So, I, you know, anyway, so anybody who hasn't done Component 4 yet, definitely look into these things that Brandy mentioned because it will make your uh, evidence pages so much easier to do than than I had. But my question is, um, so I got to do components two and three this year and I've looked at components two and three and I know that they have evidence pages, but my understanding is that those evidence pages are very, very different 
than component four evidence pages. So um, how you, which one of these might end up being, and not necessarily which one of these, but how can this work for components two and three? I kind of asked Melissa a question along those lines because um, like you said, the evidence in four is very different because there's a variety of kinds of evidence you'll be submitting for four. Uh, two and three, it's more specific. It's typically a document or a sample of student work and your instructions are very specific about what is allowed, you know, um, can only be no smaller than half a page. I mean, that's, that may not be consistent for everybody, but that's an example of the kind of specificity I'm talking about. Um, so what I think is probably most helpful is one, stick with a program you're comfortable with. So if Word is that program, that's fine because you are talking about probably no more than two, possibly three, if that many items on a page. Um, the biggest thing I would say is look at the insert image where you can wrap the text around that image. When you choose that wrap text option, whether it's in docs or Word or whatever, it allows you to freeform move whatever image you've added around the page. That becomes one of the most frustrating things for people is the inability to manipulate whatever you put on that page. Um, so that'd be my first thing. My second suggestion would just be personally, I would just put everything into PDF. I just think that at the end of the day, that is a much easier format to manipulate as you're submitting everything. Um, I don't know if that helps, but that's kind of my initial thoughts. Now, um, I do have a session tomorrow talking about videos because that's a whole other ball of wax um, because that can be frustrating to the uh, creation, compression, submission of your video. Um, but yeah, when you're submitting those pieces of student work, um, just making sure you get a nice clear photo or scan of that document, uh, I think is helpful. And then maybe Canva or something that would allow you to mark out student names uh, is another piece that I would say is helpful. And thank okay. you for that um, vote of confidence because it's one thing for me to talk about all of this. It's a whole other thing when you're in the midst of it. Because like you said, a lot of times at the beginning of the journey, you listen to all this and I sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. It's like, what? why would I need that? Until you're in it and you're like, oh my gosh. I wish that I had thought about this. Yes, so, okay, that, yes, thank you. Um, that did help. So like when I'm thinking of component two, for example, and I have, I'm a AYA ELA candidate, so same as you. Um, I'm thinking of having to submit student evidence. You um, oh, you can you hear me? You sound cut out for just a second. Go oh, ahead. sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think of scanning a piece of student work, for example, and then wanting to put a caption on it, um, like a, you know, a little blurb about what it is. And I know that that's probably not required for component two, but um, just a lot of the advice I got for component four was you don't want your assessor to have to search for what it is. So put a caption on there for why this evidence is significant so that they are not having to make the connection from your commentary to your evidence the you know the connection is right there for them so i was thinking the same thing for component two if i submit when i submit student work my plan was to put a caption on the student work somewhere explaining what was significant about you know that piece of student work so the cami would be a good um because i can upload the students work as a PDF and then I can use Cami to type the text boxes instead of handwriting everything on there. Yes. Um, okay. And the ability to um, use the shape tool and circle something. I think in the long run, it'll end up saving you words in your writing because it's already very obvious in the evidence. I don't have to say in the second paragraph where the student said whatever, it's kind of already got their attention drawn to it and the caption I think would be helpful too. So yeah, I think you're right on with that. 
And what's your recommendation for um, uploading the student work as a PDF? Like last year, I, I have an iPhone. And so I had tried to just use in the notes app on, on the iPhone where you can scan a document into a PDF and my lighting was always terrible. It just did not do good. So I didn't use that and I didn't try like Scannable, Cam Scanner, any of those others that you, you mentioned. Um, so I would just go to our copier at school and then I would scan it onto my flash drive and then take it back to my, or email it to myself either way. Yeah. Um, but just, just a pain in the, you know, it's just time consuming to do it that way. So um, when I'm doing the student work, does Scannable give a better image or do you have the same lighting issues and all of that that you have um, with the notes app on the iPhones? Scannable is my favorite. That's what I use the most. Um, that doesn't mean it's the best. I had some people that swear by the Adobe scan um, one that I put on there. Um, and I don't have like a piece of paper around here to give you um, a good example, but um, when I'm using this one, um, and I'm, I'm looking at my tablet right now, which is why I'm like looking around, um, it automatically finds not just a document, but it like locates the corners of the document. Um, the only thing I would suggest on any of these is that you have a high contrast background when you're doing the scans. So either, um, you know, get one of those half sheets of poster board that's black or a piece of fabric that's black or something and just always have that handy. That's going to improve the lighting a lot because of that high contrast. Um, but then, yeah, the other thing is when I'm holding my tablet or my phone over the document, um, I don't get as much of the glare and the issues with that particular um, app over some other things. Now, if you do have an Android phone and you use the Google Drive app, using the camera will allow you to scan to a um, straight to a PDF. So my husband did that the other day with his Android phone. It's not the same with an iPhone in the Google Drive app, but you do have that um, capability. Um, I don't think it's as nice of a, like clean of a scan, um, but all of these, it's going to depend as much on the camera that exists on your device as it is the um, app that you use. So somebody said a halo light. Yeah, I mean, if you have an extra light source, that's going to obviously make it better. Or if you can do it by a window, that's going to make it even better. Those are weird things. You never thought you had to wonder about like lighting and your phone camera, but that's also, you don't want to feel like your evidence looks terrible and they can't read it or they can't tell what you're talking about. Thank you, Carnetta, for attending. Um, and, you know, if you don't have a specific question, I really am kind of just here for any questions that you have. Um, if not, you know, be sure that you um, made a copy of the slideshow so you have that um, in your you know resources and feel free to reach out if you have other questions but um, I know we're supposed to go to 12 but I'm pretty much done with my part of it unless you have a specific question. Um, Kelly is there anything I need to mention to them as far as finishing up our session? Um, no I, you know that's it it's all um, based on participant participation. <laughs> so um, if, if you guys don't have any more questions or, or if you have something that you'd like to say, um, just, you know, private question or whatever, certainly um, 